The, um, the thinking part of it, like listening to what the trainer was saying, you know, keep your hands up, um, you know, and why you've got to keep your hands up, because obviously if you don't, you get knocked out in the chin, and trying to um, listen to what he was saying and take that on board. And, and remember, all the time, it's quite a lot of thinking. It's quite intense. One, two. Again, back to your chin. Well, seriously, I'm going to die. I'm going to go home and die. Um, I've never done this before. I don't want to ever do it again, but I suppose I have to, because I have to. I have to succeed. I have to succeed. Yeah, bring the back foot up with that right hand. One, two, and again. I'm not sure I would have done this series if I'd known I was going to be up against these guys. I mean, have you seen their arms? They're like this. And their noses are all squashed. That's not a good sign. After the break, just who will fight the fear of failure? I knew what I wanted to do, which was basically last up there and not, you know, run like a girl. <laughs> and who can take rejection on the chin when delivering a presentation. As a Health Mastery personal trainer franchisee, you're able to earn in excess of over $100,000 per annum. Hey, stop here, guys. I mean, where are the facts and figures? Back at the schoolroom, I'm also keen to push the students out of their comfort zone with a lie scale. On the road to success, the ability to lie or impression manage is not necessarily a hindrance. But does anyone actually like being called a liar? So, which end are the top liars then? I'd fall over if you told me I was a liar. Uh huh. I spent my childhood in Catholic schools. <laughs> Bruce, if a client or your wife came to you and said, does my bum look big in this? What would you say? Of course it's not. It looks lovely. <laughs> yeah, but that might be a lie, mightn't it? Yeah, it's a white lie. You've got to keep them happy. <laughs> <laughs> Moment of truth. I'm going to put you out of your misery. Jill and Bruce, you are the top liars. If you're going to call that test a liar test, I'm going to say absolutely not. I'm not buying it. Throw it away. It's rubbish. Right? If you're going to say it's impression management, I'll say absolutely. And I've worked really hard to manage my impression. And if you're going to accuse me of that, I'll say thank you very much. I like the term impression management. Chameleon, I call it. Changing your colour depending on, you know, who you're with. Brian and Matt, please step forward. Now, Brian. So you're probably the sort of person who calls a spade a spade. And in fact, the people who know you probably think the same thing. They probably feel fairly comfortable that when you say something, that's actually what you think. Yep. Obviously, you're going to embellish what you can do. You're going to always play your business, yourself, your staff, your resources up, and the service, everything. But to tell outright lies, no. To me, I don't need it that much. Sometimes there are times when you shouldn't be calling a spade a spade. There are times when you should be calling a spade a, a multi-purpose excavation implement instead, because that's what's required. Yeah, yeah. That's a common one for me, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. When it comes to material success, lying or impression management aren't necessarily dirty words. The best place to sit is somewhere in the middle. Not so ruthless that you lie to get any deal, but not so honest that you actually miss out on deals or opportunities. It's time for selected students to face the fear of rejection in John's second experiment. They must pitch their ideas to business students and lecturers at Massey University. So, will Nalisha and Janak overcome their introversion and shine? Thanks for having us here today. My name is Nalisha and I run a mobile personal training company called Health Mastery. We're essentially building our business up so it can be franchisable and we're going to tell you a little bit more about how that works today so that how you can benefit as well. What makes us different is we have a team of personal trainers who actually go to our clients' homes right within Auckland itself. We, um, we motivate them and inspire them to actually get into the best shape of their lives. There's a team of, there's a I mean, this is not right Janik's natural to to place to find himself in front of an audience selling a message. This is not his natural style. And, uh, but if the exercise is about facing your fears, he's prepared, he's having a crack at it, uh, he's doing the best of his ability at the moment. So I want all of you to stand up. Well, the audience is getting into it, and that's a good thing. It is a good thing, it is a good thing. 
I mean, let's face it, when we first saw these guys, they're a networking function on their own, on the wall, no one around them, no one to talk to. Now they've got people up dancing to rocky music, clapping their hands. This is very unnatural for them, but they're having a go. But business is more than just dancing in the aisles. And as a Health Mastery franchisee, this, we give you the opportunity to be in your own business to help people. As a Health Mastery personal trainer franchisee, you're able to earn in excess of over $100,000 per annum. Hey, stop here, guys. I mean, where are the facts and figures? This sounds very much like a presentation that I've heard from someone else who's selling a dream. Okay, so success is ultimately not about the end goal. It is about the person that you become in the process. It is about the character that you build on your path to achieving your own goals and aspirations. Thank you. Well, Nalisha and Janet did face the fear of rejection well, but they failed to present a unique business opportunity. To ace a presentation, you have to identify the target market and present clear facts and figures to back up your proposition. This is Jill's big chance to present her new business proposition, but will it engage the audience? Morning everyone, my name is Jill and I'll be telling you about my new company and the new concept, Hypnospa. I love that name by the way. Hypnospa is a hypnotherapy business modelled on the concept of a day spa. And the reason for that is that my target market is women over 30 who have the type of expendable income that they will spend on themselves in those environments. What I'm really pleased to see is, is she's listened to Tony, she's taken the advice, she's changed the name of a business, she's identified target market. And, you know, I was, a, I was pretty critical on Jill early in, the, early in the piece about procrastination, but she has definitely made some decisions. Or you can come to the treatment room if you want something that's bothering you a little bit more and you want more than an hour and 15 minutes on it come and get a treatment in the treatment room, which is 14 deep issue body sets. I get the impression that most of the females there are very interested, and the males are showing fairly sceptical. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions? I, if you'll forgive me, I simply don't believe in hypnotherapy. I've been wrong before, so don't, don't, take this, the, the, don't take it personally. But the issue is I don't believe that it's going to do anything for me. That's exactly why I'm targeting those women. Because those women are already interested in improving themselves. I'm not going to go straight for you because you don't believe in it. So I'm convincing the people who are most likely to believe in it first. I'm really proud of Jill so today. Why? She's facing these doomsdays and these non-believers in this big open environment. And if you've ever done this in front of people and someone's attacked you like this fella has, she's handled that really well. No, I absolutely agree. In fact, it's hard to tell that she's supposed to be facing her fears here because she's actually doing such a good job of it. On a scale of 1 to 10, I think it'd be about an 8. Well, Jill aced that presentation with a clear target market and costs up front. So will Lisa be able to follow suit without Joel? It's not working. Yeah, kind of. That's not going to work. Why is it not working? The audience is losing interest. Oh, my God. Just start, Lisa. Blame it on the technicians. Just say, hey, they've got a problem. Hey, let's get into this now. We won't even watch this PowerPoint. Um, probably you're wondering why is this woman's company called Joined at the Hip when her hip is not currently joined to anything? Well, that's because I usually work with my husband and partner, Joel, who no. is a brilliant, brilliant man. <laughs> no. Um, oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> We'll just take Joel and we'll put him over here by the audiovisual equipment because Joel usually takes care of this stuff and that's why I'm freaking out because usually it's not a problem. The frustrating thing for me is Lisa is enormously talented. She should be a natural at this, but you know, her mind is stopping her from being brilliant. She's got to stop making excuses, stop talking about Joel, take responsibility and nail this. You know, there are lots of other people who do what we do, and we're well aware of this. But we have something that we believe no one else in New Zealand has. We've brought Hollywood to New Zealand. <laughs> at least a little bit. That's it. I can't watch anymore. Joined at the hip is officially dislocated. <laughs> <laughs> It's not working. Coming up, can John Wall rescue the Canfields from themselves? I can now understand we have no customers. And who will step up to the mark on fight night? Who wants to step into a ring with a pro boxer? I mean, that's, that's not really an intelligent thing to do, is it?
So here we are at the Canfields. I'm here to give Lisa a bit of a panel beating session after her attempt to do a sales presentation to a whole pile of people, which let's face it was an absolute disaster. And I can now understand why they have no customers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna help them define exactly what business they're in, because at the moment they have no idea. And we're gonna give them the process to follow so they can win some business, because otherwise they're gonna be broken hearted and broken down. Um, what's your, what was your biggest mistake? Um, I just didn't have any focus. I didn't, I mean, I did not know what I was selling. But we have something that we believe no one else in New Zealand has. We've brought Hollywood to New Zealand. <laughs> One thing I can tell you for sure and certain is that people, when you meet them professionally, or personally some might say, are 100 times more interested in themselves right. than you. Yeah. So they don't care, in the first instance, where you come from, the work you've done, how you might work together. All they care about is how can this, these people or this person help me achieve these goals that I have or solve some problems that I have. After half an hour, even Joel is beginning to take notes on winning new business. What does Join to the Hip do? Join to the Hip helps you articulate your company message and what your company's all about. That in turn helps you attract more customers and it also helps you communicate better with your people because if you know who you are, then they know who they are and they know what they're a part of. Beautiful, this is good stuff. Now you guys have a business. With a refined focus and a good dose of Think Customer from John Wall, the Canfields are ready to pitch to potential client Bartercard. Let's see if they finally crack a corporate presentation. So we talked to some of your members about Bartercard, and they say Bartercard is a great networking tool. A lot of the people that we talk to say that they love the directory and that you know it brings them together with other business people and it works really well for them. You need to show your current members how to get the most out of Barter Card. So what can Joined at the Hip do to help you guys? We join with you to communicate these things creatively. And how will we do that? We'll make you a video. You've figured out who we are very quickly. Yes. Um, and uh, obviously you've had a little bit of a chat with Emma and, and can tell where we're at right now. Yes. And, and I think, to be honest with you, you've hit it right on the head. Yes. Thanks. Thank we, you. Anna. We, uh, we want to be able to communicate out into the wider marketplace a bit more about what Barter Cut is because there's a lot of people out there that don't know who we are. Right. Finally, the Canfields have understood how to win business. It's all about solving the customers' problems, not just name dropping. I think uh, this whole experience has really helped us yeah. communicate. And we'll know how to do it with other companies in the future, which is the most important thing, yeah. is that obviously it doesn't end here. You know, There'll be other companies that we will know how to present to from now on, and yeah. that is what we've really been looking for all along. Champion Zone! Number one DJ selection, Soundboy, come on! Get out to Sierra and Jello, Champion! After three gruelling training sessions, Anna, Bruce, Ruth, Brian and Joel are about to come face to face with a professional boxer. Give you a head to head over here with the butcher. <laughs> Will they overcome their fear of failure? First in the ring, Brian. Can he push through the psychological barrier and succeed? With boxing, it's uh, really chucked me out of my comfort zone. You know, I wouldn't step into this two weeks ago and do this. This was um, a pretty amazing experience. You have to um, just be aware that anything that you get, you've got to take it and give it back. No, it's been a fantastic experience. I wouldn't have changed the last two months for anything. It's just been incredible, the growth that you get, the friends that you meet, the um, situations you put in, the way it changes your psyche. Brian's achieved the goal of sparring for two minutes with a professional boxer. Anna's rearing to go. Can she maintain the pace? Some other analogies that I've um, likened it to are being sort of flexible, thinking on your feet, um, you know, taking some punches but getting up, <laughs> getting up again and carrying on. And um, like what John was saying, it is a lonely place out there and the same as when you're doing business, you've got to just keep going. I've learnt to not be afraid of things, so um, I think that's the big take-home message for me, again, that I'm not, um, I can just have a go. And uh, even if I do um, fail at it, just stand up again and keep going. 
As always, ultra-competitive Bruce is ready to give the boxer a run for his money. And I just tried to take it slowly, but my plan didn't really work out. I ended up rushing, I think, and not really being under control. But it's hard when, when a guy of that experience is coming at you. I'm glad it wasn't five minutes. Two minutes was fine. That was not the right time. <laughs> it te taught me that things aren't they're often not as bad as you think they're going to be. Um, front up things and just do them, and they're not as bad as they might have seemed. Ruth must leave her golf course mentality behind if she's ever going to achieve her million dollar lifestyle. It's me against me, and that was what was going through my head, and I just have to stay in the game. But knowing that, hey, there's going to be some punches, let's come, let's do it, and just stay in it. I think that is very, very important. I think that will help me a lot in what I do. Keep me going. Me, being the person, have to keep going. It doesn't matter about who else is out there, whether they stay or die or move on, doesn't matter. It's me. If I can stay going, I'm already successful. <laughs> Last, Joel, our class clown. He must take this fight seriously or risk a knockout. I, I basically forgot everything I taught. I was taught, or uh, almost taught, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, just, uh, but I was determined not to, uh, to back down anyway. I gotta call Lisa very soon because she's been praying for the last two hours and she never does that. <laughs> Definitely a good exercise, but I don't want to do it again today. All the students went the distance. So how does Chief Trainer John rate their performance? They did a really good job, and uh, I think it's going to take them to the next level. I really think this exercise will give them some confidence going forward. They can do new things and take on new behaviours and succeed at them. John may be wrapped with some of our students' progress, but Tony's not convinced that Janak and Nalisha's business is unique enough to make the millions they desire. So, in a last attempt to get this message through, he's called in media mogul Barry Coleman. Um, I suppose what Tony will have asked and, and what I would ask is to t tell me what the unique difference is that's only going to make this explode worldwide when the others haven't. Our unique difference is probably the fact that we focus on the mindset as well as making this whole thing a lifestyle. I don't even think the churches have managed to do that over a few thousand years. As soon as I hear the word franchise, I know that someone wants to sit in a control tower and have everyone else earning the money. Um, so I have, I've got a negative connotations about um, people on pretty low incomes being hoisted up for tens of thousands of dollars for the right to do ironing or gardening or whatever it is. Yeah. You know? He uh, so basically said that franchising wasn't his thing. He thinks that uh, franchise is a bit of a scam. Some of them have made it. And that automatically basically just told me that, hey, um, he's not the right person to talk to regarding this. So why do you think you've been doing it for four years and you're not multi-millionaires? Why is it taking because so we've maybe taken, we've taken the long route because I think maybe we've procrastinated about launching this franchise because we want everything to be perfect and we're learning. I mean, this just sounds to me, though, like you've got all the right ideas and you've got the ambition and there's still, there's still a handbrake on here somewhere. Mm. Yeah, probably our... Because I think if, the best way to make money is just to start. Well, nice to meet you. Janak and Alicia leave the School of Success still convinced that health mastery is the right path to the rich list. Janak's brother has become the first franchisee and the couple still hope to build a global empire. Just walking down into the pier to see these amazing yachts